My name is John Willis and I'm an assistant professor of silviculture here at Mississippi State University in the Department of Forestry and I'm going to talk today about uneven age management which I know for a lot of people is, is sort of a new concept but I think it's a useful concept to consider when we're talking about forest risk. So the, the goal of this workshop and what we've really been talking about today is, is limiting risk to some of the extreme weather events that we are prone to have here in Mississippi. And of course, we're talking about wind events such as tornadoes or on the coast, hurricanes, uh, certainly ice storms in northern Mississippi, and fire in the fall throughout Mississippi is a, is a big deal. And managing our forests to reduce risk uh, to these factors is fundamentally different than managing forests to grow trees quickly and maximize economic uh, production. There are uh, trade-offs to both methods, um, but we're going to talk today about the method of, of sort of reducing our risk to disturbance. We've talked earlier in the day about thinning, and thinning is certainly something that you can do to proactively reduce your risk to certain types of disturbances, but not all. And I'm sure that um, that's going to be covered in the thinning lecture. Um, but even, uneven age management is something that's fundamentally different. It's an entirely different way of managing trees. It's a strategy, if you will. Um, and really the big key difference here uh, for folks is that with uneven age management, what we're trying to do is manage multiple age classes, at least three on the landscape, rather than one, which is typically what we do in pine management, or two, which is kind of what we do in a shelterwood natural regeneration system. And so uneven age management, you're gonna have a lot more complexity in terms of the structure of your stand. I like to think of uneven age management as natural insurance from disturbance, okay? And the reason I say that is because of the size class distribution in an uneven age stand. So if we start actually on the bottom right and we take a look at the diameter distributions of that chart, what you're gonna see is a number of stems on the y-axis and the, and the distribution or the density of trees within each diameter class. And you can see from an even age stand, which is typically what we're managing when we're doing a pine plantation, you're going to get this bell-shaped curve in the diameter distribution where you get kind of one, one peak and then you get two tails coming off of the sides. The reason for that is because we've established all the trees at the same time and they're about the same size and they're about the same species. So they typically grow at the same rate. Now some will always grow better than others, which is why you get that peak in the distribution, or why you get that tail on the right end of the distribution, I should say. But by and large, they all grow at about the same rate, which is why you get the peak. Now if we jump over to the graph on the bottom left, that's an example of the diameter distribution of an uneven age stand. So again, we've got the diameter size classes on the x-axis and the number of trees on the y-axis. And you see, instead of seeing this sort of unimodal bell-shaped curve, now you have an exponential negative function in terms of your diameter distribution to where you have more little trees in your stand and at a consistent rate, you're dropping down and you have less big trees in your stand. And that's really the key difference in what we're talking about. Now let's shift gears here for a second and talk about how this sort of distribution in the diameter, uh, diameter classes can help you in terms of disturbance. First one we'll consider is, is a fire. Now in a fire, generally speaking, as long as it's not a crown fire, I'm talking about the typical low intensity surface fires that we generally get in Mississippi in the fall, your small trees are at greatest risk of mortality from a low intensity surface fire. But remember, because our diameter distribution, we also have medium-sized trees and large-sized trees in our stand. Those are going to survive, and a lot of our economic uh, vitality in our stands is maintained in those larger size classes. So in terms of value, uneven age management is going to help us maintain it and lowering the risk um, of overall mortality in uh, an uneven age managed stand. If that same fire were to burn through an even age stand, if it were to burn in it when it's young, you can see a major loss in a lot of your economic investment in your stand as a lot of those trees would die. Now alternatively, if your stand is larger and that bell curve has moved over, the risk is low. And so there is really a time dependence effect of mortality and disturbance 
uh, type. The second one to consider is wind damage. This is going to be tornadoes or hurricanes um, or just a, a brisk wind. Uh, essentially what you get in a wind event is you get the larger size trees are going to be more at risk and that's because their biomass is sort of out of uh, kilter where they're keeping a lot of their weight. And so in a windstorm they're going to bend and snap and break. But a lot of times what you see is some of the smaller trees are going to survive and live. This is the opposite situation of fire. And so in a wind event, if you have a lot of those small trees in your stand, which you're going to have in, a, in an uneven age managed stand, you're going to have your next generation of trees there to take up and, and occupy that growing space. Alternatively, if you're managing an even age stand and all your trees are large at the same time and you get an extreme wind event, you're likely to experience a, a very significant loss in um, value of your stand. Uh, the same can be said for ice. Generally speaking, the larger trees are more prone to snapping as they have more crown area where ice can collect. Again, the same principle applies. Because we're not managing one single size class, we're managing multiple, you're, you're increasing your resilience to these types of disturbance. And that's, again, just an example, if you look at those two graphs, of that diameter distribution and think about the relationships we just talked about and sort of the natural insurance you're bought by maintaining uh, a variety of trees in different size classes within your stand. All right, a couple of the advantages uh, outside of, of sort of the lowering of risk to disturbance that you gain by managing your stands in an uneven age um, structure uh, one of those is that you're bet hedging. Now, certainly, um, we're not looking at the best time to be selling pine saw timber on the market. Our, our, our prices are significantly down from their peaks. Um, the problem with that is that if you're managing a standard and even age uh, structure, you really can only sell your wood uh, at the end of the rotation. I mean, you can always hold on to the wood, but then you're, you're risking a uh, chance of disturbance, which is really what we're talking about here today. So in an even age setting, you're going to be harvesting one or maybe two times. So you're kind of at the mercy of market conditions. If prices are down, well then your overall take is going to be down. In an uneven age system where we do lots of frequent uh, harvests, they're gonna be lower intensity harvests, so you're going to be taking off less volume per harvest, but this frequent entry into the stands allows you to kind of hedge your bet against market conditions. So there's a greater chance, at least in some years, that you're going to catch uh, improved prices and that's gonna overall help um, buffer against the effect of, of, of a market crash um, and pine prices. And that's essentially what we've just covered there. Uh, another another uh, beneficial quality of uneven age management is the quality of wood that you produce. Now, we're not growing trees as fast in an uneven age setting, and that's because we're limiting the amount of light and nutrients and moisture that the trees have access to. But what that does a lot of times is it improves our stem quality as the trees are going to grow straight up through the harvest gaps that we're creating. So you typically uh, are able to grow straighter trees and um, because they're growing slower, you're going to get a smaller juvenile core. Now, the, if we get paid at the mill based on weight, essentially. And so the, you, the take that you get if you're selling a heavier tree because it's grown slower and has a smaller juvenile core is going to be greater. And generally speaking, the prices offered to the landowner are going to reflect that. So you're going to potentially get a higher offer um, for wood that's been slower grown in an uneven age setting. And you're certainly going to get better form trees, which can be very important um, for all species that we're growing. Uh, some non-monetary benefits that you receive by practicing uneven age management uh, is that you, with uneven age management, you're never clear cutting. You're always having a mature forest on your property. And for some people, that is, that is their main goal, is aesthetics or wildlife habitat. And so you never go through that phase, which a lot of people do not like, where you've clear cut the property and there's no trees left. With uneven age management, you will always have a mature forest left on the site. And that's uh, uh, a value that most people, or some people will go after. Um, in terms of erosion, if that's a concern that you may have, 
again, because you're keeping vegetation on the site at all times, that helps lower your risk to erosion. So those are some of the non-monetary benefits that uneven age management offers. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the theory of uneven age management. Again, as I previously mentioned, the stands should contain at least three size classes. Each size class is going to occupy a certain area of space in your stand. Now, large trees, of course, they're going to take up more space in your stand, but that you have fewer of them. Smaller trees take up less space and you have lots of small trees, but each size class, in essence, occupies the same area of space in your stand. And really the key is, is maintaining the structure. If uneven age management is going to be sustainable and we're going to be able to harvest over and over and over repeatedly in these stands, we're going to have to maintain the structure of lots of small trees and fewer large trees. So we're constantly going to have to be recruiting trees up through and along these different size classes you see. So, of course, and I'll go back one slide just so we can look at this again. This is the ideal... Um, sort of negative exponential function that you're looking for with uneven age management. But it's not going to stay there forever as, of course, trees are going to grow. And so you're going to get excess in, in the amount of volume that you're carrying in, in different size classes. And that's going to take us away from sort of that um, distribution that we're going after. And so really, that is where our harvesting comes in. You harvest the excess biomass or volume from each diameter class that you have. Now you're not looking at diameter classes in every two centimeters or four centimeters. To make this simple, foresters will typically uh, categorize 10 centimeter di diameter classes or perhaps even larger. And you bend all the trees together there and you can get that same negative exponential. The key is that you're harvesting to maintain to where you're always having small, uh, more small trees and less large trees. The goal is when you harvest is to, is to return yourself back to that uh, negative, original negative exponential. You let the trees grow again and then you harvest again. So a way that you can do this, uh, there's several ways that you can maintain the distribution. One of the more popular methods because it's, it's very simple to use is the BDQ method. So the three letters stand for B, which is your target basal area that you're trying to maintain. You, you, you can determine that, determine that. It can be anything from 40 all the way up to 120 or, or whatever basal area you desire. Uh, the D stands for the maximum diameter size class you want to maintain. Again, you can make that whatever you want. You can make it a 14-inch tree. You can make it a 24-inch tree. It doesn't really matter. That's in your control. Um, and the Q is the ratio in the next size diameter class. And so that gives you that negative exponential function that says that the next bigger size class is going to have this ratio of smaller trees. And you, again, as the landowner, have the flexibility to change that. So all three of those variables in the BDQ system are under your control as, as a landowner. And it's very simple to use, and the majority of foresters will be aware of how to use the BDQ system. So a frequent, or a, a question I often get asked about uneven age management is how often should you cut? Well, I can't tell you a, a there's not a correct answer to that in all situations. It really depends on the species that you're managing, the type of product that you're trying to grow, the site quality that you have, uh, and, and the environmental conditions that, that have occurred um, during the rotation. Typically in uneven age management, you're going to re-enter the stand every 8 to 25 years. Now you're going to remove part of the basal area in each stand. Remember, we're never clear cutting our stand, we're just removing part of the basal area. And so we're getting short cutting cycles and less volume removed, but more frequently removed from our stands. And so here's the idea if you take a look at the graph of, of how it would work where you've got time on the x-axis and volume of standing um, timber on the y and each line represents a, a cutting cycle. And again, that can be anywhere between 8 to 25 years where you, that, that dotted line is sort of the distribution that you want to maintain, that negative exponential. And you can see that volume growth eventually exceeds that. You cut it back, you return it to your original distribution you let it grow again, you cut it again. And this is essentially the, the sustainable cycle of uneven age management that you can follow. 
And so in theory, you can do this it, it, as long as you own your land. You can continue harvesting for years because you're never clear cutting. You're going to maintain this frequent flow of wood and this frequent stream of income. Um, there are critical things about when you enter your stand. Each harvest need to, needs to accomplish three specific objectives. The first of which is you have to open up enough space to get regeneration. To maintain that negative exponential distribution, you need to be recruiting new trees into your stand. So you need to open up large enough harvest gaps to maintain uh, optimal regeneration conditions. And that's the, really the key to sustainability. Um, you also need to open up enough growing space that is going to allow some of your existing trees to grow and advance into your larger size classes. Because remember, when you remove some of your trees from your larger size classes, you're going to have to replace those over time. And so you need to stimulate the growth of some of your residual trees in your stand. The third thing you always want to be doing with your, with your harvest is you want to be improving the quality of your stand. Where possible, try to remove some of the diseased trees or some of the trees um, that are on their way out or some of the trees that are just poorly formed. So you're constantly improving the quality of your stand and this is going to improve um, your net income at the end of each rotation. It should um, in, uh, increase over time with uneven age management. Remember, you are relying on the smallest size classes you have and the existing trees that you have in your stand. So you need to create those conditions to allow them to advance and grow. One word of caution that this graph is showing you is it's a very, very tempting thing when practicing on even age management to take all of your best trees at one time. That is a very bad idea and it's a term that we, we call uh, high grading. Essentially it's taking the best and leaving the rest. The problem with that is that with uneven age management, we're typically utilizing natural regeneration. Okay, And so with natural regeneration, the quality of your trees in the future depends on your seed sources that you maintain in your stand. If you take your best trees from your stand, then the quality of your regeneration will typically decline over time. And that's what this graph is showing you. Okay, where the dark bars represent the uh, net income received from harvest and the lighter bars represent the net income where you're not high grading. You're, you're doing a, a responsible and even age management. And what you'll notice is that early on in the first couple of years, you do receive higher profits from high grading because, yeah, you are taking some of your better trees that are going to be worth more money or you're taking a lot of your bigger trees. But over time, the profitability of high graded stands is going to decline as you get lower and lower quality in your stand. Whereas if you look at the uneven age management or the lighter bars, you're, you can see that over time you slightly increase uh, your net income with each harvest and it generally stays steady, uh, which is ideally what we're shooting for with uneven age management. But um, to be fair, there are several drawbacks with uneven age management that you need to consider as a land manager. And I like to point all of these out so you can weigh the pros and the cons before you, you make the decision to switch your management strategy. The first is it, is it is a more difficult system to implement. We are managing multiple cohorts out, you know, on a piece of property. It's not planting trees and lines. Uh, there's lots of logistic considerations with, with uneven age management that need to be considered. Uh, one that certainly matters is damage to residual trees. Remember, we're not ever clear cutting from our stand and we're gonna be leaving some valuable saw timber in there, okay? And so if you have a, a, a logger that is not experienced with uneven age management, you can do a lot of damage to your residual trees by in the harvesting process. And that of course is going to take a lot of the profitability away from uneven age management. So you really need a logger that's used to practicing uh, in these types of conditions. Um, certainly you're gonna have higher logging costs as well. The logger is going to have to take his or her time in order to prevent damage uh, to your residual trees. So it's not as efficient as even age clear cutting uh, typically is. And so that's gonna be reflected in, in the, the price that the logger is going to offer you to do the job. Um, in terms of a drawback for genetics, remember, you're practicing natural regeneration. And so your regeneration cohorts are only as good as the quality of trees you, out there, you have out there to produce the seeds. 
a lot of people who are coming into forestry will pick up a stand that's been previously high graded and so the genetic quality is very low in a stand and so you have to build that over time back and forestry is a very long-term process and so depending on how long or what your time frame is for your land ownership um, it may be very difficult to practice on even age uh, management. You really need a higher quality starting genetic level um, to make this a, a viable practice. Um, natural regeneration failures are another big issue. Uh, they, you have to create the ideal conditions to get species to regenerate naturally. There's several reasons why natural regenerations can occur. You could have failed seed crops, poor environmental conditions, herbivory, um, the list goes on and on. Uh, those are completely out of your control. But remember to maintain that negative uh, diameter distribution that you're trying to, you need to recruit those small trees continuously in your stand. If you have prolonged regeneration failures, a lot of those smaller trees, you're not gonna be able to maintain the, the density that you're looking for. And so that can throw our, um, uh, our distribution out of line from where we want it to be. But natural, but natural regeneration failures are normal in forestry. So you have to be aware that it can be difficult to maintain the distribution and you may need to rely on artificial regeneration in times of prolonged natural regeneration failures. Uh, finally, and this is probably the big reason why uneven age management is typically not practiced in Mississippi and really throughout the South, is that you need to regenerate. Uh, most of our economically valued species are shade intolerant. Okay, and so they're not going to thrive in some of the smaller or low light conditions that uneven age management can create, depending on the type of way you're practicing uneven age management. There's some ways around this, which I'll talk about in the next few slides, but keep in mind that you are managing primarily shade intolerant species if you're managing your property uh, for economic gain in the south. And so we need to be cognizant of creating large enough gaps um, to allow our shade intolerant species to prolifer proliferate and um, expand on the landscape and grow into these uh, larger size classes. So, a couple terms. The selection system, which is what we want to practice, is a silvicultural program that creates or maintains an uneven age stand. Selective cutting is essentially high grading. We want to avoid that for reasons we've previously discussed. Okay, now the two methods that are typically used in uneven age management to regenerate stands and allow other size classes to move up are single tree selection and group selection. Single tree selection is going to restore that desired diameter distribution by removing individual trees or, or very small groups of trees. Uh, what this does is it creates very low light environments on the forest floor. And it's really been designed to regenerate shade tolerant species. So I don't recommend people who are managing the property for timber to practice sh uh, single tree selection because we, again, we're managing shade intolerant species nine out of 10 times. The other method is group selection. This is by far, in my opinion, the more preferable method to be practicing uneven age management because instead of removing single trees or just a small group of trees, you're, moving lar you're removing a larger group of trees, which of course um, will produce larger harvest gaps in higher light environments. This is by far more preferable if you're going to be practicing uneven age management to maintain shade intolerant species. The key with this is that you need to create harvest gaps at a minimum of two acres and probably up to five acres, depending on site quality, to maintain light uh, environments high enough to recruit the type of species that we want. So I would suggest, if you're managing for economic reasons, to practice group selection. Here's an example, you're looking at this picture is um, uneven age management in longleaf pine. Longleaf pine is a shade intolerant species, of course, it requires that light. And you can see in that harvest gap, what you have is your regeneration cohort establishing. And in the middle of that gap, you can see that the trees are obviously doing better as they have greater access to resources. We call that sort of a regeneration dome. And that's very typical of what you're going to see in uneven age management is you create these gaps within the, um, within the overstory and you get these domes of regeneration in the center of the gap. But this just illustrates that you can practice uneven age management with shade intolerant species, but you do have to create the large, uh, large enough gaps to accomplish regeneration. Now, 
A lot of folks will say this is very difficult to do. A lot of people can't uh, find a logging group in your area willing to do this as it is less efficient, a less efficient form of logging, or perhaps you don't have uh, experience and you're uncomfortable managing group selection. Well, another way to implement this, and this is really probably only if you have a large enough acreage, I'd say a minimum of 100 to 200 acres, um, where you can actually practice even age management or managing one cohort, but you stagger how old your cohorts are across your property. In doing so, you essentially are managing several different cohorts, but you're doing it in an even age way. This would avoid the problem of having to do group selection, cutting harvest gaps, um, because you can still manage through even age practices such as clear cutting, which is what loggers would prefer to do as it's easiest. Um, but what this will also give you is some of the resilience of managing multiple age classes because you should have trees of different size on the lands across your property um, based on the different times of establishment. And so this really solves a lot of the logistical problems you have with implementing uneven age management because loggers will be able to, to practice this and you still get a lot of the benefits um, in terms of natural insurance that we've talked about. So some take home points. By spreading, uh, spreading out the age classes, uneven age management will provide natural insurance to a variety of the disturbances that we've talked about in this course. Uh, it's also going to provide you a frequent stream of income, which allows you to hedge your bets against poor market conditions, as we're currently experiencing with pine saw timber. High grading is a practice that definitely needs to be avoided. If you're going to practice uneven age management, remember we're usually relying on natural regeneration and your next cohort is only as good as the, the parent tree's genetics are. So you need to leave your best trees out there a lot of times for regeneration purposes. Uh, when you want to harvest, you want to maintain a lot of your larger best trees for this reason. Um, just thinking about the future down the line, what your future stand is going to look like. If you decide to use uneven age management, I would, I, would, I would suggest staying away from single tree selection if you're managing for timber production. For other management purposes, single tree selection can be just fine. It's just, it's typically not going to promote the type of species we need to if we're growing timber for economic reasons. Uh, I would again suggest using group selection and an easy way to implement this is to use that hybrid approach if you have a large enough property where you break up your properties into several different smaller stands and just manage them in an even age way. And I think that'll really simplify the implementation of uneven age management for folks here who perhaps are less familiar with the technique. With that, I'd be happy to take any questions. Thanks.